Let's understand dynamic programming using the Fibonacci sequence as an example. So the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers that starts with 0 and 1. And each subsequent number is the sum of the previous two. So the next number here will be the sum of 0 and 1 which is 1. And then the next number will be the sum of 1 and 1 which is 2 and so on. Mathematically, it can be represented as f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. And the base cases will be f of 0 equals 0 and f of 1 equals 1. Now let's look at the naive and inefficient approach before optimizing it using dynamic programming techniques. We'll start by defining a function that takes an input n. If n is less than or equals to 1, we simply return n, handling our base case. Otherwise, we recursively compute fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. And at first glance, this seems to work fine. If we run the code for small values like n equals 5, it quickly gives the output. But for larger values like n equals 100, the execution takes an extremely long time. In my case, I had to stop the program because it wasn't finishing. The question is, why does it happen? Let's analyze the problem by drawing its recursion tree. For our example, we'll take n equals 5. And to compute f of 5, we need its previous two values, f of 4 and f of 3. But each of these values also needs their last two values. And this process continues until we reach the base case. The same calculations are repeated multiple times. For example, f of 3 and f of 2 are computed again and again in different branches of the tree. This redundancy is the reason why our naive recursive code is so slow. Instead of using previously computed results, it recalculates them unnecessarily, leading to an exponential time complexity. To solve this efficiently, we need a way to store and reuse the already computed values. And this is where dynamic programming comes in. First, let's look at the top-down optimization approach known as memoization. We begin by initializing an array of size n plus 1 and set all values to negative 1. This represents that the values at those indices are not yet calculated. Now let's start calculating f of 5. The value at this index is minus 1, meaning we need to compute f of 4 and f of 3 first. Moving to f of 3, the value at index 3 is also minus 1. So we further break it down into f of 2 and f of 1. f of 1 is the base case, so we update the index 1 in the array to 1. Moving to f of 2, it's still minus 1. So we break it down further into f of 1 and f of 0. f of 0 is another base case, so we update the index 0 to 0. And now we compute f of 2 equals sum of the previous two values, f of 1 and f of 0. So it will be 1. So we store it at the index 2. And similarly, we compute f of 3 by adding f of 2 and f of 1, which is 2 here. So we update index 3. Now we move to f of 5. It turns out we still need f of 4. But here's the optimization. We don't need to recompute f of 3 and f of 2 again because they're already stored in the array. We simply retrieve their values and compute f of 4, which is 3 here, and store it at the index 4. Finally, we compute f of 5 by adding the values of f of 4 and f of 3, which is 5 here. Keep one thing in mind that we started from f of 5 and worked our way down to the base case, and then we used the stored values to compute larger values. And this is why memoization follows a top-down approach. Now let's see the code for this approach. First, we define a function that takes two parameters, n and an array that stores pre-computed values, initialized with minus 1. Inside the function, we first check if the value at the index n is not minus 1. If it is not minus 1, that means that the value has already been calculated. So we simply return it and next we check for the base case. If n is less than or equal to 1, we set the value at index n to n and return it. Otherwise, we recursively calculate the value by adding the last two computed values and store it in the array. Finally, we can run this function by choosing a test value n and initializing an array with all the elements set to minus 1 before calling the function. 
Now if we run the code with n equals 100, it will give the output instantly. Next, let's explore another technique within dynamic programming called the tabulation method. This follows a bottom-up approach where we build the solution from the base case instead of solving recursively. So first we initialize an array of size n plus 1 with all elements initially set to 0. The first two elements are set to 0 and 1 representing the base cases. Then we start a pointer i from the index 2 and iteratively compute each Fibonacci number by adding the previous two values and updating the current index value. And this process continues until we reach the end. This method is iterative and often more intuitive than memoization. Notice one thing that we started from fib of 0 and then 1 and all the way up to n. And this is why this approach is called the bottom up approach. The code for this approach is simple. First we define the function that takes n as input. Then we check the base case as usual. Next we initialize an array and set its 0th and first index elements to the base case values. And after that we run a loop starting from the second index onwards updating each value by adding the previous two elements. Finally, we return the value at index n, which gives us the Fibonacci number for that position. So using this example, we have got a basic understanding of dynamic programming. In short, it's an optimization technique where a problem is broken down into simpler overlapping subproblems, and then the solutions are stored and reused for efficiency. Now it has two main approaches. One is memoization, which is a top-down approach that uses recursion. And the other is tabulation, a bottom-up approach that uses iteration. Now for dynamic programming to be applicable, a problem must satisfy two conditions. One is overlapping sub-problems, which we have already seen. And other is called optimal substructure, meaning the problem can be divided into sub-problems, solved independently, and then combined to form the final solution. In this video, we explored the Fibonacci number problem and how to optimize it using dynamic programming. In the next few videos, we will dive into some of the most famous dynamic programming problems and break them down visually to understand them better.